today I had a feline patient that came in and had a history of heart issues. So we were with Cornell's cardiology service on rotation there and it's the end of my first week and so this was a very interesting rotation, one very focused on learning and demonstrating in the moment what's being seen and what the doctors are thinking. How's he been doing at home? He's been doing good. Um, they have no concerns other than, she says his appetite may be a little bit decreased. She doesn't know if that's medications or not. What Do you know what the differentials are for a thick left ventricle in a cat? Anyone could answer to so yeah, so hyperthyroidism is one. So it's been really great to listen to them problem solve when they're maybe not sure and collaborate with one another as cardiologists. And then they share that information with us and get you know an idea of where we're at with what we're thinking about things and then help guide us to make sure that we fully understand what's happening. And then a, a more rare one, which you might not come up with on your own, but is what we thought that maybe he would have is called transient myocardial mm -hmm. thickening. The Cornell program gives us the space and opportunity to go out and find the information and then we bring it back to the table and they make sure that we end up on the right track but they really give us that room to push ourselves to um, go out and find the answers. 3.78, so just about 4 millimeters, the free wall 4.28. Those are very normal measurements. I would say about halfway through my first year is when I really started to trust the process. I had gotten more of the hang of how they were requiring me to learn and process information. But in, before that point, there was a few challenging moments, so I felt like I needed to lean into the process more, and I would say that's how I really began to trust it. I'm feeling more and more prepared every single day, and when I come across challenges in new situations, once I'm out in practice, I'm definitely going to be prepared on how to problem solve and troubleshoot, and also how to collaborate with other people to get the answers that I need. I would say don't sell yourself short, and really have faith in your abilities and how much you want to become a veterinarian. Um, at the end of the day, if it's a goal that you have, you're willing to work for it to get there. So don't let having to put that extra work in deter you from um, actually following through because it's in those moments where we do have to put in the extra work and do have to step outside of our comfort zone that we find the most success and joy.